And mic check, testing, one, two, one, two. Can you guys hear me? Testing? Oh, okay. Hi, Eileen. Mahal, how are you? Uh, green Eyes, uh, everyone, Teresa, Donna. Uh, be patient. Uh, my, my computer is not cooperating too much. Seems to be running a little slow. I had too many windows open, so I had to close. Uh, I had to close some windows here. Uh, I will be ready in a few minutes. Very short study again tonight, Lord willing. Uh, I want to take a look at the uh, the word place. Now you know, like many other things in the Bible, uh, sometimes we take things for granted, but it's only by God's grace, by God's mercy, we come to realize we see things uh, spiritually in the Bible. Uh, that gives the Bible, that gives a lot of verses new meaning. And this uh, should be one of them. Another one that I've offered uh, is the word secret and uh, how that relates to Christ. So basically, we I'll see if I can offer some things tonight that, uh, again, bringing us back to the gospel, bringing us back to Christ. The place of rest... <clears throat> I think is uh, is a reference to the kingdom of God and Christ Himself, right? And the focus, the the verse in question. Let me see if I can find it. Um, a couple of different ones. There was one in particular that I was looking at. Let's see. Oh well, no particular uh, target verse. We'll just look at uh, some of these verses as they relate to the word place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Every place. Uh, you know, normally we look at the word place. We don't... We don't... Uh, think too much, I, I believe, uh, as far as how this might relate to the kingdom of God. So again, just another reason that why we want to look at the Bible, we read the Bible carefully, because everything is there for a purpose. Isaiah 66, verse 1, Where is the place of my rest? The latter part of the verse. The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? The place of my rest would be what? The place of my rest would be what? Oh, that was Margaret. Uh, Margaret, hi. And Teresa, welcome. So the place of my rest would be another reference, I believe, to Christ. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Can you see, uh, can you begin to see how the uh, this might relate? Proverbs 24, verse 15, Lay not wait, O wicked, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. Can you see that? And who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? Spoil not his resting place. He's talking to those in the church, I believe. Remember the command that uh, love your neighbor as yourself. God commands the body to feed the flock. And then the pastors are not feeding the flock. What happens when they're not feeding the flock? They spoil the resting place. In other words, they're taking away the covering of the righteous from them. Right? They're taking away the covering of the righteous from them. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Rest is the resting place of, of the believers. And the unsaved in a the church, they have to be careful the kind of gospel that they share 
Otherwise, if they bring a different gospel, a gospel that has no power to save, then in essence they're taking away the resting place of the elect from them. Uh, Althea, hi, welcome. Second Chronicles uh, 6. Is that Chronicles? Yeah. 6 verse 41. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh, the seventh day from all his work. So there is a uh, relationship here, again, I believe, between Christ and the seventh day, the day when God rested from the works that he made. That, again, I think is pointing to salvation, the redemption of the body. So I think we can see here that there is a tie in uh, a relationship between place and Christ, the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. That is the place of the believers, the resting place of the believers. So the word place is not just an ordinary, an ordinary word that God uses in the Bible. It is referring to salvation or referring to Christ, depending on the context. So here, a couple of more verses, uh, looking at the word place. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Chronicles 17, 9. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place. You see that? They shall dwell in Christ. They shall dwell in their place and shall be moved no more. Now, historically, I think this has to do with the individual salvation of the believers, the elect. But today, as God is separating the wheat from the tares, there is a uh, God is also bringing He's bringing back the captivity of the elect, and so He is bringing them to their resting place, to Christ. Jude chapter one verse six. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Um, now notice in the verse before that, First uh, Chronicles 17, 9, it says, They shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Now the believers, they're a part of the body, wheat and tares growing together. And... And then God speaks of the church leaving its resting place, leaving Christ. That has to do with the falling away. That has to do with uh, the, the judgment that comes on the body. Now the angels which kept not their first estate. That, first of all, I don't think, you know, spiritually, I don't think God is speaking of literal angels. Angels are messengers and the body of Christ is made up of his messengers, both wheat and tares. What happens when the church comes into the Great Tribulation? Well, they leave their habitation. They leave their resting place. He have reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So because the church forsakes Christ, the church leaves its resting place, now uh, it is reserved for judgment. And this judgment comes... Again, I believe in the form of God forsaking the body and then allowing Antichrist or Babylon to rule. 2 Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sin, same idea, God spared not the, the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. Chains of darkness, I think we'll find to relate to Babylon, and they are reserved unto judgment. Now this judgment is not manifested really until... Uh, the man of sin is revealed. That makes sense? Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. See, this is how the church leaves its habitation. First of all, it has a, 
a corporate relationship with Christ many are called right many are called but few are chosen so these people they came very close to the kingdom they were a part of the kingdom they had the blessing of God just like Israel of old coming out of the land of Egypt corporately they were the people of God corporately they together they were the uh, the body of Christ but then God we read about God destroying them in the wilderness for unbelief so eternally they were never saved it's the same thing with the church also corporately there are uh, the church is a body but eternally only the believers are redeemed and so they've tasted the heavenly gift and the good word of God in verse 5 and the powers of the world to come but then what happens verse 6 if they shall fall away if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame okay any questions any questions so far so the church leaves its resting place its place of rest salvation in Christ being a part of the kingdom having been a part of the kingdom and then in tribulation the church falls away uh, Genesis 40 verse 13 yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place now by the way who was that well actually it's in the verse thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler remember the uh, the account the butler and the baker the butler being a type of the believers the elect that God restores unto their place unto Christ but the baker what happened to the ba what happened to the baker the baker came under the the judgment of God God uh, prophesied that Pharaoh would uh, Pharaoh would uh, destroy the baker uh, Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 7 then will I cause you to dwell in this place so what I'm offering basically is anytime we see the word place it is a reference to Christ right just like everything else pretty much everything that we've looked at in the Bible however in judgment we also see we also read about the place of the wicked and I'll offer a few verses there in a few minutes Jeremiah 7 verse 6 if you oppress not the stranger the fatherless and the widow and shed not innocent blood in this place now who are the ones who shed innocent blood who are the ones who shed innocent blood remember the two witnesses when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them overcome them and kill them remember that who are the ones who shed innocent blood Babylon right the unsaved in the body the unsaved church they kill the body fear not them which kill the body All right, neither walk after other gods to your hurts. So the same thing is in view there. Uh, the idea of not shedding innocent blood, in other words, don't kill the body. Thou shalt not kill. And notice it's in this place, in Christ. The, 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 the body is Christ. Isaiah 60, verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir trees, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary who is that to beautify the place of my sanctuary who's that talking about again mm, no not real well yeah in a way it is when you say us right it's talking about the the body of Christ the place of my sanctuary well first and foremost it is Christ the place of my sanctuary it is it is Christ now Christ is the head of the body so that's how I think we can see the uh, the, the relationship there between uh, Christ and the body so yeah it is the body of Christ 
but more specifically in the context, beautify the place of my sanctuary is to bring glory to God, the redemption of the body. Babylon is fallen, come out over my people. So yeah, it is us uh, in a sense, but more specifically, I know sometimes if we say, uh, you know, us, depending on the context, it could be talking about the corporate body or the the believers in, in, in Christ. Christ lives in... Right, yeah. Again, um, I, I just think we, we, we want to try and be careful, uh, you know, when we you know try to make the distinction between us and Christ there is a corporate body and then there is the uh, the eternal body uh, so yeah so first and foremost we're looking at Christ the place of my sanctuary that is a reference to Christ uh, Isaiah 54 verse 2 enlarge thy place I'm sorry enlarge the place of thy tent the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. So again, I think we see a connection there between place. It is a place of dwelling, habitation. It is the kingdom of God. It is Christ himself. Isaiah 22, verse 23. I will fasten him as a nail and a sure place. I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. So there again, Christ is in view, right? The place of my sanctuary. Uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 10. For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. What is that? Uh, historically, uh, the, the, the children of Israel, they went into captivity in Babylon. So Babylon would be a picture of the outside. In other words, those that are, uh, Eric writes, I didn't even realize Eric was, when, oh, there he is. Proverbs 3, the glory of Lebanon is Christ himself after Babylon. Yeah, Lebanon has come against it in judgment. Okay, so we have the glory of Lebanon. We have uh, God causing you to return to this place. In other words, you're going to leave Babylon, come out of my, my people. Babylon is fallen. Historically, the Jews, they came back to their own land. Their own land would be a type of the kingdom of God, not the physical place itself. Now, historically, yeah, that, that was uh, them coming out of Babylon. But spiritually, it is the believers now being separated from Babylon, separated from the wicked. Okay, any questions? Any questions there? Uh, I've offered a few verses here on the salvation side of the word place. Now let's take a look at their place, their secret, remember their place, removal of Christ, where God now installs Antichrist in the day of judgment. Now, these verses make a lot more sense, don't they? For example, Revelation 12, verse 8. And prevailed not. The beast, the dragon, they prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So can you see how the wicked, they were counted, the unsaved in a the body. They were an intimate part of the body. Can you see that? But now in judgment, God is casting them out. Neither is their place, their salvation, their redemption, their resting place is no more. Uh, Revelation 2 verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Um, and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will re remove thy candlestick out of his place. Can you see that? You see everything in the Bible uh, has a purpose and meaning. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place. They don't have Christ, Donna writes. Yeah. So God is going to remove the candlestick out of his place. In other words, that's Satan being cast out of heaven. That's that's the, the, the body of Christ now coming under the judgment of God and, and now they are cast out they are removed from the kingdom 
their place is no more. They're Christ. Isn't that interesting? Job chapter 40, verse 12. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. Tread down the wicked in their their place, their habitation, their gospel. A gospel that has become Babylon. Job 6 verse 17. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their place. Their place. Yeah, exactly. Babylon. They are consumed. Well, you know, there's a twofold uh, meaning here in the place. Okay, I, I think you guys will probably uh, notice that. There is their place which was Christ. Christ was dwelling in the midst. Now the Holy Spirit is taken out of the midst. And so Christ is not there. But also their place, if you think of their place now being Antichrist, that too is under judgment. Can you see that? It's like uh, Christ comes down and he binds the wicked and he cast Babylon into the, the lake of fire. So that's judgment. So their place. So now there is uh, the... Uh, Althea writes, their place also tribulation, fire. Right, right, exactly. Uh, that's what I'm offering. Their place being a place of darkness, a place of Babylon where Satan dwells. It is Antichrist. It is the false place, the false Christ. So that's one way of looking at their place. And then God at the same time brings a... There is the, the judgment there also, that which has to do with removing Christ. So either way, they lose. Their place is Satan. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 37, verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. That's the verse, actually, that, uh, that I first looked at. And looking at the word place. So you might consider that a, a target verse. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place. So God takes away from the wicked. He gives to the poor. He gives to the elect. That makes sense? And it shall not be. Thou shalt consider his place, and it shall not be. So then the, the place of the wicked is, is no more. Job 36 verse 20. Desire not the night. And the night here, I think, is a clue uh, pointing to the great tribulation and judgment. Desire not the night. That's Babylon also. Desire not the night when people are cut off in their place. See that? In their place. They're cut off in the body. So can you see? This is another example, I think, a very strong uh, evidence that judgment is all about the church. So this idea that God is judging the world, that, that I, I don't see the Bible to be teaching at all. There's no, there's, no, uh, there's no relationship. If we consider the, the body of Christ, that's always been in view as far as a judgment and salvation. So desire not the night when people are cut off in their place. So judgment is on the the place where Christ dwells. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 7. The lion has come up from his thicket and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place. Now what I think you might find interesting here, how does God judge the church? How does God judge Babylon? How does God judge Babylon? The lion has come up from his thicket and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. Who is the destroyer of the Gentiles? Remember Abaddon? Uh, what's the other name? Abaddon and a couple of names that um, I'm thinking of in the book of Revelation. Which means destroyer. Let me see if I can find it. Two D's. 
Abaddon, and Apollia in Revelation 9, verse 11. These two words, I think, they, they relate directly to destruction. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollyon, Abaddon, and Apollyon. So the lion has come up from his thicket, the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He has gone forth from his place. Now there is a there is a a relationship, and I hope you guys can see this, Lord willing. There is a relationship between Christ the judge and Babylon as the weapon of judgment. So God can use those interchangeably. He speaks of Christ coming in judgment, but it's not really Christ. It's Christ allowing judgment to come through Babylon. He comes as a thief. He is not the thief. Can you see that? That, I think, is very, very important, Lord willing, because that helps us to... Uh, Right, exactly, Michael. God comes through the false prophets. He allows the false prophets to uh, to increase, to multiply. That's a form of judgment. So if Christ comes in judgment, we read about Christ judging. Yeah, he is judging, but we have to understand that the, the mechanism, the weapon that he uses is Babylon himself. It's not Christ. It's not the believer's doing the judging the believers are not judging you know it, if we have that idea uh, that I've heard in the past is oh well the believers are judging right God comes through Babel Babylon if the believers are judging well this means that okay they're they're bringing a message that is causing fear in the heart of people and that's the method of judgment that's what I used to think that's the way that I used to look at it but if you think about it uh, carefully and allowing the Bible to define the terms, I think we'll see that, no, the, the believers, God can also refer to them as judging, but that's only because they are with Christ. Christ and the eternal body are doing the judging. But then again, that judgment comes in the form of uh, allowing Babylon to destroy Babylon. He comes through Lamech, Nimrod, the giants, or the men of renown, the false prophets. All right, almost done. Uh, Isaiah 26, verse 21. For behold, one second. Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Now you might read this. Donna writes, God blind, blinded them that they can't see. Yeah. So that's the judgment. Uh, God allowing them to, to be subject to themselves, to be subject to the false prophets. They were blind because they wanted to go. They wanted to be God, right? They 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 ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit. They thought that they would be able to see, but then that in itself has caused them to to not see, right? So there's a paradox right there. So for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place from Babylon. From Babylon. Well, it is Christ. God is, you know, the Lord is Christ himself. So he is coming from his place, from the kingdom. It is a reference to Christ, I believe. And to bring judgment, to punish the inhabitants of the earth. The inhabitants of the earth is parabolic language for whom? Not talking about your unsaved neighbor. And, you know, we can look at these verses on the surface and then try to apply a, a literal meaning to them which which is okay I guess to some degree but I think the substance ultimately is what these are pointing to spiritually what they relate to spiritually so for behold the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain they were blind because they went right um, all right, last verse, Job chapter 7, verse 10. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Can you see the, uh, the spiritual meaning there again? Neither shall his place. Thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. So when God speaks of removing the place of the wicked, or the wicked being removed from its place, from their place, 
it is the language of judgment, but the place there is uh, specifically pointing to the kingdom, the body of Christ, salvation. All right, a uh, quick summary. The Bible appears to be showing place as a reference to Christ. The place is related to Christ himself. The place of his rest being where the elect find salvation. His place with Christ. Yeah. So Christ is the place. However, in judgment, the place of the wicked, their gospel, their joy, their secret, all of which are synonyms for the, the body or Christ himself, so their gospel, their, their place is taken away from them. And that's what uh, we've been sharing by God's grace. Uh, we see the Bible has a lot to say regarding the spiritual nature of the church. And when I say the church, again, I'm not talking about that local church over there. It's very easy to point the finger there and then begin to judge. So when we talk about church, we want to first look in the mirror and then point the finger at us. What am I doing? Am, am I being faithful? Do I know uh, enough um, from God's word by His grace in order to uh, make correction to my uh, to my own doctrine? All right, uh, let me let me pause or stop the recorder, and uh, we'll open for discussion.